Well, we are trying to, but our bull elephant is misbehaving big time. He's being very naughty. He's giving us lots of attitude this afternoon, which is not uncommon. But every time I start the car, he has a lot to say about it, lots of head shaking. And the problem is, is that he's up on a hill now. And I'm a little bit worried that if he does decide that he doesn't want to come if he does decide he wants to come down the hill, it's not going to be an easy place for me to escape. So I'm just trying to reposition myself so that I've got a little bit more of a sort of exit plan should he decide that he does want to be full of nonsense. Yes, carry on. That's better. You can see lots of swagger in that walk today. Lots of head shaking and ear flapping. Yes, yes, we know you're a big boy. Okay, enough now. Right, let's try that again, Craig. So at one point he was standing right behind us and every time I tried to start the car he would have his little head shake and do it. Hey, enough. Stop it. Off you go. So sometimes with these elephant bulls you've got to make a bit of a noise and so just a little shout like that is enough to deter him to carry on. So we're not going to push him any further because he's already demonstrating that he's not impressed with us at all. So let's wait for him just to move off a bit so that we can then be able to move. Now with elephant bulls like this, no, stop it. Now hopefully he's going to stop his nonsense and not actually come this way again. But look at the size of him as he comes over this hill. He is massive. Yes, big boy. You are very impressive. Okay. Okay. No, enough. Hey. Now we're just going to try and just lower our voices a little bit, let him move off. Because probably the sound of me talking is also just irritating him a little bit. So you can see he's on a serious sort of assertive mission and that's because he's higher than us. That's also why we're getting so much sort of dominance display from him. He knows he's got the higher ground which makes us seem a lot smaller than what he is. It's also because there's females that are just coming out of the bush there as well. So. I don't really want to get between him and females. Let's just see where the rest of the herd comes out because I, like I say, don't want to see his reaction if we are between them. But luckily now with the females, that should divert his attention a little bit and mean that I can get onto higher ground, which will be much better for us in the long run. But there we go. There's the herd there. You can see them. And he's now on the sort of backside of the herd. And it is amazing to see the size difference between him and the females. So I'm going to try and just sort of get a picture. I don't want to go too close because of his general sort of demeanor that he's got this afternoon. So there we go. You can just see them in the distance now on the road. But look at how much bigger he is than the adult cow there. Now she's not a small girl by any stretch of the imagination. But he is monstrous in comparison. So there we go. It's a really nice sort of comparison between adult females and young ones. Now, are you going to harass a female? Last night we saw a male harassing a female the whole afternoon and it seems like we're going to see it more again. Look at the female's posture in the back with the little baby. See how her ears are out? She's displaying to that male, I'm not happy with you being so close. Off you go. But if there's a female in heat and a male that's in mass like this is definitely going to be harassing any female that he can. His heightened level of testosterone means that he wants to mate, he wants to find females and that's why he's also giving us so much trouble is because potentially we were now between him and this herd. Now this particular herd is a herd that we do know now that I can kind of, well when I saw them just now move off, it's the short trunk herd which is another one of our favorite sort of characters out here. She's a female that's got a shortened trunk by probably what we think was a snare. Now snares are wire traps that are sent, I mean, uh, sorry, that are display or not or used on the fringes of the reserve often by poachers to try and get um, some sort of meat, particularly people that are really, really, really impoverished and don't have access to, to money and be able to f to feed themselves and they'll then go after bush meat and so sometimes an elephant's trunk gets caught in that and it causes 
a little bit of an issue and the trunk then loses its sort of tip but it is not too much of a problem this particular female has shown that she's so adept to still using her trunk she can still drink she can still feed so it is an incredible story to watch as she moves around even though she has this missing tip now the elephants are starting to move back this way so I'm going to just try and position myself in a little bit of a better place so that I don't have to deal with this grumpy bull as much as we did just now and so while we do that let's go across to James and see what he's up to